Yeah, thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, my name is Tomáš and I have been working for uh, MapTeller for four years as geodata specialist. So welcome to presentation about open tiles. First of all, I would like to start with some 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 little history about open tiles, and uh, after after that some core workflow and the idea around the open tiles. And at the end of the presentation, I will show you new features of latest release and future development vision. So. Let me introduce OpenOptal's uh, project. The whole project uh, allows you to convert OpenStreetMap database or any other uh, spatial da data into vector tiles. The main purpose or the main, the main like, aim of, the, of this project is to create the general purpose map. The whole project is open source and it's fully dockerized, starting from importing data to uh, generating generating uh, the vector tiles itself. It's very easy to maintain which feature and how will be in the vector tiles by SQL and by YAML files. The Open Tiles has been a very active project for, for almost eight years, so it's almost two years younger than uh, Mapbox Vector Tiles specification itself. It has a very active uh, community and uh, the whole time is maintained by MapTile team, although with the different, different uh, leaders. The, the core uh, data is coming from OpenStreetMap, and OpenStreetMap uh, have very active communities, so they adding new and new data. And in OpenOptiles, we keep adding new features and optimizing these data for the vector tiles. Of course, we uh, we keeping the style, the look and feel of the style uh, up to date. As I mentioned, the, the main purpose of the project is to generate or create the rich general purpose map without any any thematic layers like skill layers and stuff like this. The style is also the fully customizable and you can create very beautiful maps around the vector tiles. The, the, the idea of the project was having the whole world in vector tiles on 64 gigabyte flash drive. But nowadays with the new data in OpenStreetMap and with, with uh, optimizing the data and the one, uh, one tile size, is we are now about 105 gigabytes of the whole world in vector tiles. But again, 20, uh, 128 gigabytes flash drive or micro SD is much cheaper than 64 gig flash drive back to 2017 so it's it's still win so what you can what you can find in in vector tiles these vector tiles are generated by optima tiles so in highest zoom level so zoom 0 to 5 you can find mainly the nature earth data in version 5.1 then in the middle zooms, let's say 6 to 13, they are generalized and carefully selected open street map data, sorry. And, and it's because the size of the one tile and the, and the uh, density of the, of the features for, for particular zooms. And on zoom 14, they are detailed OSM data, not generalized for, for the full geometry precision. With this raw, raw view of the, of the vector tiles, you need to apply some style. So you can see that when you, when you apply the style, then the map magically gets some, some reason. And with 
uh, this this uh, is the open map tile style, which is adapt the open street map carto style for the vector tiles. Uh, open map tiles is very useful and used by many 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 companies in their projects, which are showing the maps for their customers or internally, and these these projects are generated by open Notal schema and, and project. There are also some open data implementation like Swistopo or British Open Zoom Stack. As uh, Mapteller has been a maintainer of the open Notals, they also uh, offer the hosting service or direct direct use of the tiles in a vector or raster format and I, I hope that uh, all of you heard the vector tiles cartography from from Petya so the styling is, is uh, done on client side so you can prepare very beautiful map Mapteller also uh, offered the uh, customize which have very nice functionality like visual fil filtering and many many other uh, features that you don't need to go into the JSON, but you can you can style it visually in 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 the browser. Mapteller also uh, offered the downloading service for pre-generated packages like MB tiles with the weekly updates. But back back to Open tiles itself, the Open tiles contains uh, or it's composed from two separate repositories. The Open Tiles repository is contain the schema and the Open Tiles tools contains the tool, tooling for, for generating importing data database. The schema schema defines which features, which generalization on which zoom level will be shown in vector tiles. So this schema should really quickly uh, ensure you what what is about the the green one. The it's it's the project itself. The blue one it's these 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 three. It's mainly for the schema, so the configuration file and the layers. And the gray one it's these these six for the, these six steps. Are mainly the the tooling in the Open Optals tools repository. You can see that the PostgreSQL with the PostGIS is the core of the of the whole project. So, how to how to even start with the with the Open Optals? It's multi-platform, so you can use Linux, macOS, Microsoft Windows. Then you need Docker and some CPU, RAM, some some space on your SSD. And then just run the quick start, and with some area, and at the end you have your own tiles which you can host or publish somewhere. You can also run each step manually. So uh, when I talk about the, the schema, there there are uh, two configuration file, then the configuration of each layer, and then there are six steps. So the first step is to download, for example, from Geofabric, the Estonia, some, some extent. Uh, the second step is to import the static data, so natures or lake lines. The third step is to import by imposing free the, the layers and, and uh, from, the, from the downloaded uh, OSM PBF. The fourth step is uh, optional, so you can import Wikidata uh, translation for the features which contains the Wikidata ID in the OpenStreetMap. You can import the languages which are missing there through the Wikidata, Wikidata ID. And the fifth step, you import the SQL magic, so the generalization, the, the selection of the features which should be on each, each Zoom level. And the last, the sixth step, is to generate the tiles itself. So, uh, as I as I talk talk, there are two two main oh, sorry two main 
configuration file. So the first one is openoptiles.yml where you define which layers will be included into vector tiles and some metadata for, for the mm, MB tiles. But the layers are the crucial one. The second, the, the .env file defines which tool version you will use, which bounding box you would like to generate, which min zoom and max zoom will be generated, or the output name of the file. So, as I mentioned before, the core of the data storing is Postgre and PostGIS. That's very robust uh, data server, and with PostGIS is very powerful uh, data processor. So you can have your own data in it, and you can adjust or create new layer to the vector tiles, or adjust already, already uh, like configured or defined. So very easy change if you if you would like to see the airports from Zoom 6 and not from Zoom 8, easy change in the SQL and you will see your, your uh, airports from Zoom 6. But OpenOptas is not just about importing data and generating data. Uh, OpenOptas also include the PostServe. So the PostServe uh, <laughs> serving tiles directly from the PostgreSQL. So you don't need to generate the tiles to generate the MB tiles, and you see the on-the-fly generating tiles through the Postgre. It's for basically for testing purposes, but you can you, you can try it and set up in for also the live preview. Then there is uh, tile server GL. It's not it's like uh, the there is a link to the Docker and you can run it through the open tiles through the make make target. So you can serving on your own computer or server the already generated MB tiles. Then you can run the Maputnik uh, still directly into Open Tiles project. So it, it will download the latest Docker, run it. You can just put the link and you can use your own Maputnik and style it and create your beautiful map. Also, there is uh, updates, so you can have daily update your MB tiles with the new new data. Okay, so you have you create your own own layer, you add your data, you test it through PostServe, you generate it through uh, through Open Map Tiles, you view it through the tile server GL. But now you have to apply some style, as I showed you before. So there are nine open GL styles directly in the open Tiles organization. So uh, the main one is open Tiles style, which is part of the open Tiles repository. The eight another styles are like separate repositories. So you can download it, you can use it, you can modify it, and play with them in customize, in, in Maputnik, or in directly in, in a JSON file. So this is uh, how it looks like the open map tiles style, which is uh, inspired by OpenStreetMap Cartel style, but for vector tiles. Uh, this is basic, bright, uh, positron, how it see, this is Fjord name. Everybody knows the uh, toner from, <laughs> from, from Stamen. And yeah, dark, it's a little bit dark here, but it's okay. And of course, any styles you want. So this style made made by Petra for Force4G, so thanks. And it's look very great. The colors are, are very nice. So to sum up, you have you have Postgre database with PostGIS, with very powerful uh, server and processor. You import in, you import your data. You can modify. You can test on the fly. You generate the tiles, and you can create your your own style, run it, and host it your own tiles through Tile Server GL. 
and these all are included in, in Open Notals project. So, what was the chan changes in the, la the latest release, which was released a few months ago? These uh, changes was just the polishing, the, the real Open Notals, because you already get the full feature rich uh, general purpose map with, with many, many, many features, and you can style style and create uh, very various type of maps. So there was 97 pull requests with 106 files change. And uh, we keeping the open optal style like up to date and with the show all features capability. So what, what is in the open optals, you will see in the, in the open optal style. Also, MapTeller has been uh, maintaining the plain teller open up tiles with the parity with the SQL version. And now I would like to show you some pictures what was changed. So, for example, for, for Great Britain and Ireland, there is a network attribute, so you can style this row differently. And, and it's moved to Zoom 6. So you will see the roads. I don't know if everybody see, like th there are many roads, but these roads are uh, highlighted now and you can, you can start it differently. Also, for example, the Trans Canada road, which is like on the same hierarchy level as uh, US interstate highways. And it's, it's the same important, but now you can, you can start it for, for the new attribute the network CA Trans Canada. Also, you uh, you now uh, sorry, and uh, the long distance ferry lines are now visible from Zoom Zoom level four. So, into the empty and uh, empty seas and oceans, you can you can style the ferry lines. These are just for for uh, presentation purpose. It's not look like that. At, at uh, real world, uh, the charging stations. So you can show the your pit stop for electric vehicles and with the with the styling. Again, this is the open map tile style, and with the vector vector icon. So you can make it bigger with with no raster raster rasterization. So much. Uh, also, a lot of offices like diplomatic or or uh, governmental offices are now in the in the schema. New languages. So now the open tiles includes like 80, 80 languages, which you can translate your your map itself. It could be dynamically based on IP, or but it's it's it is on your background. Uh, there was some some changes in tool tooling, some additional data data in Nature Earth, new uh, tool for generating sprites. It's Preet. Uh, it was written in Rust. The new version of of PostGIS. I know that there is 3.4 now. We need to test it test it more. And of course, the open task styles and this styles is bind with the schema, so what is in the schema, it's in the style, and if you, if you comment it out some layers, these layers will not be included in the style, so the style is dynamically changed. I was talking about open optal style, so on the, on the uh, web page uh, osm.openoptals.org, you can, you can test it, as a, you can see that there is a standard standard uh, standard open street map carto, but also the open open map tiles. You can see that there are some changes, and it's not one to one, but it's more or less the same. And the main power of, of open map tile style is 
that the vector tasks are behind it. So over zooming, nice, nice, uh, sharp, sharp edges, uh, fast and customizable. So, but nevertheless, uh, thank you the community because uh, without community, the, the project will not be where it is. And, and so thank you very much to, to all the contributors and all the community and everyone who use it. Some, some last, last uh, uh, the last slide about the future. So the open portals should convert to be more like catalog of features or layers. So you will just select what you need and generate what you need. Uh, also bring the zoom level 15 to be even much more uh, precision on geometry and much more features like trees, benches. And of course the real time updates for OSM, it's it's big thing and uh, still still need to, to be polish, polish more. So I will not talk anymore. This is just, just sum up. And thank you very much for your attention and I'm glad to, to you are here. Yes. Hi. So uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I have a very broad question. I, I hope it's not too annoying. Uh, so uh, when making open map tiles, um, what is the most difficult thing? Because uh, like extracting geometries from open street map and points of interest, that's like relatively simple, I would say. But uh, I, I think there are a lot of complexities around like labels and when do you start sh showing labels and the importance of points of interest and stuff like that can you can you expand on some of those the, those complex issues uh, when making uh, open map tiles yeah the complexi complexity is around the, the selecting the zoom levels and the right features on the right so you don't want to see the street names on zoom zero where the continents should be shown the labels. So these are decisions which was made during the eight years of, of the development. So and it should it should make the styling easier. So if you put everything on Zoom Zero, then you have one one hundred gigabytes uh, one one tile or something like that, but it's nonsense of course. So you need to to keep the one tile size low. So even like five kilobytes of one tile is better. The limit is like 500, uh, 500 kilobytes for one tile. It's, it's uh, relatively good, but uh, this, if, if the uh, tile size is growing up, then the um, uh, styling is slower, more demanding on the hardware, so your phone will be hotter and hotter and the downloading the tiles will be slower so yeah that's the domain uh, that's that's the points to keep the e zoom very like lightweight and that's that's where the generalization and the selecting just uh, just needed features for e zoom okay and and uh, about those importance of the the points of interest for example how do you decide that it could be it could be using uh, another another project like uh, QRank from Wikidata, mm -hmm. so you can you can match if if the point of interest have Wikidata, you can search the importance. Then uh, it's it's also purpose of the map. So if you're creating the map for outdoor, it's more more important to have the uh, view sign or. Uh, direction sign more it's more important than i don't know the shoe store yes yes exactly so then you can you can decide what is important or not right thank you we have a tiny bit of time for one more question uh you mentioned that uh 
you also use Wikidata uh, to, to enrich the styles. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, the, Wikidata, the Wikidata are used just for translation and it's optional, it's optional step. So you don't need to download the uh, Wikidata languages from, from, so if the feature in the OpenStreetMap includes the Wikidata ID, then the project looks into the Wikidata and download the languages which, which are missing for the feature. So if, if the, in the OpenStreetMap there are English name, Czech, British, Estonian languages, then it's okay and it will keep the OpenStreetMap language which is in the OpenStreetMap. But if, for example, Chinese missing, then it will be added from the Wikidata. But as I mentioned, it's optional step. You don't need to do it. And I think that's all the time we have for you. So thank you, Thomas. And uh,